Who is Azmuth? Why is he known as the first thinker? Why is his father a blue mechamorph? What led to his partner's departure? Beyond the Omnitrix, what other inventions has he created? Let's delve into Azmuth's life story in chronological order, tracing his journey from his early days as a tadpole to the events of Omniverse. I almost vaporized you. How could I have been so blinded by rage? I'm a terrible father. I haven't exactly been the greatest son either, Dad. I always let my inventions come before family. Azmuth is a Galvan, a species resembling frogs, originating from the planet Galvan Prime. Renowned for his extraordinary intellect, he is the creator of the Omnitrix. His life began on Galvan Prime, where even as a tadpole, he exhibited remarkable intelligence, achieving perfect scores in his exams. During his youth, Azmuth pursued scientific endeavors, but this pursuit cost him his relationship. He was romantically involved with a fellow Galvan named Zenith, who shared his passion for science, but approached it with more caution. Azmuth's inspiration to create the Ascalon a powerful reality-altering sword occurred while he was with Zenith. The Ascalon, crafted during a planetary alignment, was designed to harness the universe's fundamental forces, granting its wielder the power to alter reality. Zenith left Azmuth, disapproving of his reckless ambition in creating the Ascalon and desiring more of his attention. Following her departure, the Ascalon was stolen by a warrior seeking to bring peace to his world, but he inadvertently destroyed his planet, unable to control its power. This tragedy led Azmuth to shift his focus to peaceful scientific endeavors, culminating in the creation of the Omnitrix, a device intended to foster harmony among different alien species. He hoped this invention would also reconcile his relationship with Zenith. After completing the Omnitrix, Azmuth entrusted Xylene with its protection. He intended to send the Omnitrix to plumber Max Tennyson on Earth, but it ended up with his grandson, Ben Tennyson. Ben used the Omnitrix to combat villains like Vilgax, who sought to exploit it for galactic domination. In an alternate timeline, Vilgax was Azmuth's assistant, possessing the knowledge and capability to create his own Omnitrix. But that's a story for another video. For now, let's focus on the Prime timeline. In his early experiments, Azmuth inadvertently created life on his homeworld's moon, leading to the birth of the Galvanic Mechamorphs. This species included malware, a villain we'll discuss later. Azmuth also developed the Galvanian Skewmorph, a device used to defeat the villain BRRT. At this point in his life, Azmuth was deeply committed to benevolent science. In the film Ben 10, Secret of the Omnitrix, Azmuth plays a pivotal role. The movie begins with Ben Tennyson facing a dire situation as the Omnitrix accidentally activates its self-destruct mode during a battle with Dr. Animo causing erratic transformations. Ben, Gwen, and Tetrax embark on a quest to find Azmuth to avert the crisis. Their journey, fraught with dangers including encounters with Vilgax, leads them to Incarsicon Prison and eventually to Xenon. They discover that the Omnitrix's destruction could trigger a universe-ending explosion. In a climactic moment, Ben meets Azmuth, who is initially unwilling to assist. However, Ben's resolve and commitment to protecting others persuade Azmuth to deactivate the self-destruct. In the final confrontation, Ben, transformed into way big, defeats Vilgax, saving the universe. Impressed by Ben's heroism, Azmuth decides to engage more actively in universal affairs and begins collaborating with the plumbers. Wait, you have to tell me how to work this thing. Don't you want to figure it out on your own, like a true hero would? In Ben 10, Destroy All Aliens, Azmuth, moved by Ben's devotion to his family, decides to reconnect with his own family after a prolonged absence. He travels to Earth to meet Tetrax, following a strange signal from the Omnitrix caused by Gwen's mana, which led to a malfunction. Disguised as a truck, Azmuth's ship crashes after being affected by the Omnitrix's light. Azmuth's father, observing from a distance, mistakenly believes Azmuth is in danger from a Tokastar after Azmuth disappears. Donning armor created by Azmuth, his father travels to Earth and encounters Ben, unaware of Ben's ability to transform into various aliens. They discover that the Tokastar is actually Azmuth, transformed by the Omnitrix's malfunction. Azmuth, in his Tokastar form, fails to recognize his father and friends due to the Omnitrix's issues, However, they eventually restore him to his original Galvan form. 
Azmuth's father also reveals his youthful Galvan appearance, thanks to a new body created by Azmuth. The two reconcile, addressing past misunderstandings. Azmuth assists in returning Ben's parents, transformed into aliens, to their human forms. He notes the Omnitrix's malfunction was due to excessive mana, puzzling Gwen, who is unaware of her anodite powers. Ultimately, Azmuth and his father return to their homeworld. This thing was so overloaded with mana, I could pick up the reading from halfway across the galaxy. Overloaded with what? They haven't told you yet? Eh, you'll find out soon enough. When Ben later encounters issues with the Omnitrix, he visits Azmuth on Galvan Prime for assistance. There, Azmuth and his assistant Albedo are attacked by Malware, a corrupted mechamorph seeking enhancement. Malware is defeated by Ben, but the encounter leaves Albedo disillusioned with Ben's use of the Omnitrix. Disagreeing with Azmuth, Albedo leaves to create his own Omnitrix. In the two-part episode Showdown, Azmuth visits Ben, cautioning him about the improper use of the alien feedback. Ben's disregard for this advice leads to the loss of feedback from his Omnitrix's alien catalog. Azmuth reappears in the Ben 10 Alien Force episode, Good Copy, Bad Copy. In this episode, he plays a crucial role in resolving the chaos caused by Albedo, his former assistant. Albedo, having created his own Omnitrix replica, finds himself trapped in a form resembling Ben due to an unexpected link between their devices. He causes turmoil in his efforts to retrieve the original Omnitrix from Ben. The situation escalates until Azmuth steps in, revealing Albedo's past connection to him. Disappointed in Albedo's actions, Azmuth deactivates Albedo's Omnitrix, leaving him trapped in Ben's form as punishment. This episode underscores Azmuth's authority as the Omnitrix's creator and his dedication to its responsible usage. But someday I will be free. Then they will all suffer, starting with Ben Tennyson. In the two-part special, War of the Worlds, the hybrid fleet's arrival at Galvan Prime catches the planet's defenses off guard. Azmuth, watching from his tower in despair, is visited by Professor Paradox, a time-traveling entity. Despite his initial pessimism about the Galvans and the galaxy's survival chances, Paradox convinces Azmuth that the Omnitrix could be key to thwarting the hybrid's plans. Reluctantly, Azmuth leaves Galvan Prime with Paradox moments before a hybrid ship destroys his tower. They teleport to Earth to meet Ben Tennyson. Azmuth, along with Paradox, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin, discusses the hybrid's plan to use a hyperspace jump gate to bring their fleet to Earth. Azmuth reveals that the Omnitrix contains DNA samples from over a million sentient life forms, making it a potential tool for restoring any species eradicated by the hybrid. However, he expresses concern about the Omnitrix being destroyed in battle, which would result in the loss of this genetic repository. As the battle against the hybrid invasion intensifies, Azmuth, Ben, and the team devise a plan to capture the hybrid commander and force a retreat. They fight their way to the hybrid control tower on Earth. Witnessing Ben's determination and resourcefulness, Azmuth activates the Omnitrix's master control for Ben, granting him access to every alien form and the voice command feature within the Omnitrix. This significant act of trust from Azmuth acknowledges Ben's growth and capability as a hero. The team, with reinforcements from Max and the Plumber's helpers, proceeds to the hybrid homeworld through the hyperspace jump gate. They confront the hybrid Supreme and the Council. Azmuth plays a pivotal role in this confrontation, exposing the truth about the hybrid's genetic purity. Their obsession has led to inbreeding, disease susceptibility, and sterility, dooming them to extinction. Ben uses the Omnitrix to send out an energy wave that mixes the DNA of the hybrid with other species, saving them from extinction and demonstrating the Omnitrix's true potential. The Hybrid Council, initially horrified, eventually accepts their new fate, and a new Hybrid Supreme, Ryan Rasig III, is elected. He orders the retreat of the Hybrid fleet, ending the invasion. At the episode's end, the Omnitrix resets itself to its normal 10 alien selection, and Ben loses the Master Control. Ben's request to Azmuth to unlock the Master Control again is met with refusal, as Azmuth encourages him to figure it out himself. Azmuth's role in these episodes is crucial. He provides essential knowledge, empowers Ben with the Master Control, and helps reveal the solution to the hybrid's genetic crisis. His actions and decisions are instrumental in turning the tide of the war and saving countless lives across the galaxy.
In the episode, The Vengeance of Vilgax, Azmuth contacts Ben, warning him against tampering with the Omnitrix. Despite Ben and Kevin's attempts to hack into the device, Azmuth advises patience, assuring Ben that he will understand how to unlock the master control when the time is right. Ignoring Azmuth's advice, Ben and Kevin's meddling leads to a malfunction, releasing Chromastone, Goop, Spider Monkey, and Way Big from the Omnitrix. Azmuth guides Ben to reintegrate these alien forms back into the Omnitrix, but expresses his displeasure with the turn of events, warning Ben that he will not provide future assistance. You have disappointed me, Ben Tennyson. I shall not help you again. In the episode Primus, Azmuth takes control of the Omnitrix to defend the planet Primus against Vilgax. He summons the device from Ben, causing it to detach. Overpowered by Vilgax, Azmuth loses the Omnitrix. Admitting his defeat was partly due to his lack of practice, Azmuth watches as Ben cleverly tricks Vilgax into transforming into Goop, allowing Ben to reclaim the Omnitrix. Despite his initial displeasure with Ben for damaging the Omnitrix, Azmuth ultimately decides to let Ben retain it. I mean, does this make up for... Damaging my Omnitrix? No. I shouldn't even allow you to leave with it. But will you? You are welcome, Ben Tennyson. In the Ben 10, Alien Force finale, the final battle parts one and two, Albedo makes a significant return against Azmuth and Ben. The episode begins with Myax informing Azmuth of the Ultimatrix's theft with security footage showing someone resembling Ben as the thief. Azmuth identifies the culprit as Albedo and reacts with dismay. Albedo teams up with Vilgax, who eventually seizes the Omnitrix from Ben. Later, Azmuth responds to Ben's call for help, revealing that the Omnitrix was initially intended for Max. When Ben expresses regret for surrendering the Omnitrix to Vilgax, Azmuth agrees but notes that winning isn't so easy without the Omnitrix. This realization leads Ben to the decision to destroy the Omnitrix to defeat Vilgax. Ben successfully destroys the Omnitrix and forcibly obtains the Ultimatrix from Albedo, using it to defeat Vilgax. The episode concludes with Ben simply mugging Albedo. Azmuth in Ultimate Alien Azmuth features prominently in the Ben 10 Ultimate Alien series. His first appearance is in the episode Map of Infinity, in this episode, Ben and his team face Ultimate Agregor, who has become extremely powerful after absorbing the powers of five aliens. Despite their best efforts, Agregor overpowers them, leaving them unconscious. Azmuth, the creator of the Omnitrix, criticizes the design of the Ultimatrix and warns the team about Agregor's plan to assemble the Map of Infinity. This artifact, divided into four parts and scattered across the galaxy, could lead Agregor to the Forge of Creation, granting him immense power. Ben, Gwen, and Kevin journey to McDulty to secure the first piece of the map. They encounter harsh conditions and guard creatures, and even with Ben's transformation into Ultimate Echo Echo, Agregor outsmarts them, capturing the first piece of the map. The episode concludes with the team narrowly escaping setting the stage for their continued quest to stop Agregor. In the episode Perplexahedron, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin are teleported by Azmuth to the Perplexahedron, a complex artificial planet, to prevent Agregor from obtaining the last piece of the Map of Infinity. Despite facing numerous traps and challenges within the Perplexahedron's shifting structure, they fail to stop Agregor from defeating the Sentinel, the map's guardian, and securing the final piece. Agregor escapes with the complete map of infinity, while the team, though defeated, remains determined to thwart his plans. In the Forge of Creation, with Ultimate Agregor possessing all four pieces of the map of infinity, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin are criticized by Azmuth for failing to stop him. Ben decides to transform into Alien X, but Professor Paradox intervenes, reverts Alien X back into Ben, and explains Egregor's plan to absorb the power of a newborn celestial sapien at the Forge of Creation. Paradox takes the team to the Forge of Creation's entrance, where Ben encounters his ten-year-old self. Both Bens transform into various aliens, including Four Arms and Stinkfly, to battle Agregor. Ultimate Agregor nearly succeeds in absorbing the celestial sapien, but Kevin intervenes, absorbing the Ultimatrix and mutating into a powerful form. Kevin overpowers Agregor, absorbing his powers and reverts Agregor to his normal state. However, Kevin becomes unstable and flees. 
Paradox returns young Ben to his timeline, and the episode concludes with the team resolving to deal with mutated Kevin. Throughout the Egregor storyline, Azmuth serves as a guide and a source of wisdom for Ben and his team. He expresses disappointment in their failures to stop Agregor and provides vital information about Agregor's intentions and the dangerous powers he seeks. Azmuth's knowledge of the universe and its hidden artifacts, such as the Map of Infinity and the Forge of Creation, is crucial in understanding the magnitude of the threat posed by Agregor. Despite his occasional criticism, Azmuth remains a supportive ally aiding the team in their mission to thwart Agregor's plans and protect the universe from his ambitions. In the transmogrification of Eunice from Ben 10 Ultimate Alien, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin encounter Eunice, a girl with amnesia who emerges from a crashed alien pod. Eunice quickly bonds with the group, especially Ben, and displays unusual abilities. They are confronted by Sunder, a bounty hunter after Eunice. It's revealed that Eunice is actually a Unitrix, a prototype of the Omnitrix, which assumed human form from Gwen's DNA. Azmuth, the creator of the Omnitrix, arrives and explains Eunice's true nature. In the end, Eunice becomes Azmuth's assistant, leaving Ben with a flower as a memento. In Simeon Says, the 13th episode of Ben 10, Ultimate Alien Season 3, Eunice investigates issues with the arachnichimp DNA sample on Primus and ends up crash landing on Aranhasima. Meanwhile, Ben, Gwen, and Kevin meet Simeon, who seeks their help after inadvertently causing an outbreak of xenocytes on his home planet, turning arachnichimps into DNA alien slaves. The team travels to Aranasima and faces challenges due to interference between Eunice's Unitrix and Ben's Ultimatrix. Despite initial failures, they manage to reverse the DNA aliens back to normal, including Eunice, who had been transformed. Simeon shows signs of reform by refusing to harness the power of the remaining xenocyte, the episode ends with Simeon selling stolen DNA repair guns to the incursions for profit, suggesting his change may not be complete. In The Ultimate Sacrifice, Ben Tennyson and his team face off against a red robot. During the fight, Ben transforms into Ultimate Humongousaur, who unexpectedly attacks Gwen and Kevin. It's revealed that the sentient Ultimate forms within the Ultimatrix, including Ultimate Humongousaur, want to kill Ben to gain their freedom. These sentient Ultimates believe they are being enslaved and trapped within the Ultimatrix. Ben and the sentient Ultimates engage in a heated battle within the Ultimatrix world. Gwen enters the Ultimatrix in her astral form to help Ben, while Kevin seeks assistance from Azmuth. Despite intense confrontations, Ben decides to sacrifice himself to free the sentient Ultimates. However, Azmuth intervenes and fixes the Ultimatrix, freeing the sentient Ultimates without harming Ben. Azmuth then relocates the sentient Ultimates to a peaceful planet where they can live freely. This episode highlights themes of responsibility, sacrifice, and understanding. Ben's willingness to sacrifice himself for the sentient beings created by the Ultimatrix underscores his growth as a hero. Azmuth's intervention and decision to give the sentient Ultimates a new home demonstrates a resolution to the ethical dilemma posed by their existence. In the episode Solitary Alignment, the story continues with Dagon and Sir George taking his sword Ascalon back. Azmuth, the creator of the sword, demands its return. Azmuth takes Ben, Gwen, and Kevin on a journey through his past, showing how he created Ascalon and its consequences, including the destruction of the incursion planet. He also reveals his involvement with Earth's Middle Ages, providing Sir George with Ascalon to defeat an extra-dimensional creature, Dagon. The team tracks down George, leading to a battle where Ben and George agree that if George loses to Dagon, he will surrender the sword. Azmuth shares that the Omnitrix was partly created as an apology for Ascalon and to gain recognition from his lost love, Zenith. But there was one more, the real reason. I was hoping she would notice. In The Ultimate Enemy, Part 2, the final episode of Ben 10, Ultimate Alien, the team faces off against the gigantic Dagon. During the battle, Ben transforms into Ultimate Way Big, but is unable to significantly damage Dagon. Sir George fights valiantly, but is ultimately killed by Dagon. Vilgax then absorbs Dagon's powers using a machine built by Siphon. Armed with these new abilities, Vilgax destroys the team's surroundings, but Gwen teleports them to safety. They regroup at the Plumber's Mount Rushmore base, but Vilgax, now with immense power, soon finds them. In a climactic battle inside the base, 
Ben uses Ascalon, a powerful sword, to absorb Dagon's power from Vilgax, reverting him to normal and restoring all the Esoterica back to humans. After the battle, Ben receives a new Omnitrix from Azmuth, the original he has been working on since Ben received the prototype. Azmuth then takes Ascalon and the Ultimatrix away. The episode concludes with Ben, Gwen, Kevin, Julie, and Ship together, marking the end of the Ben 10 Ultimate Alien series. Azmuth in Omniverse. Azmuth's story continues in Ben 10, Omniverse in the two-part episode titled Showdown. On Galvin Prime at the Galvin Historical Museum, Wyatt leads a tour and discusses Omnivoracious, the extinct predator of the Galvins. Meanwhile, Dr. Psychobos, Kyber, his pet, and Malware arrive and extract a DNA sample from an Omnivoracious skeleton to upload into the Nematrix. They confront Azmuth, the creator of the Omnitrix, with Kyber's pet transforming into various predators. Ben and Rook in Undertown reminisce about Ben's past, especially his attachment to his former alien form, Feedback. Flashbacks show how Feedback was Ben's go-to alien and how Malware absorbed Feedback's energy, extracting him from the Omnitrix and leading to his destruction. As Malware and his allies attack Galvin Prime, Ben, Rook, and Azmuth engage in a fierce battle. Azmuth provides strategic guidance and reveals the weaknesses of Malware's team. The episode ends on a cliffhanger with Galvin B destroyed and Dr. Psychobos and Kyber's pet captured. The second part deals with the aftermath of Galvin B's destruction. Malware, now a massive threat, scatters his parts over Galvin Prime. Ben as NRG, along with Rook and Azmuth, fend off the debris, which are parts of Malware himself. Facing the giant-sized Malware, the team struggles to stop him. Azmuth suggests activating the planet's firewalls to prevent Malware from reaching the core. As the battle continues on Galvin Prime, Ben transforms into various aliens, including Humongousar and Waybig, to combat Malware. Malware absorbs Rook's proto-tool, enhancing his abilities. Ben confronts his past and reaccesses Feedback's form, emerging from Malware and using his abilities to absorb and redirect energy. Azmuth empowers Feedback using the Helix, enabling Ben to defeat Malware. The episodes conclude with Malware's destruction, Feedback restored in the Omnitrix, the Galvanic Mechamorphs repairing Galvin B, and the faction's threat neutralized, with Kyber still at large. The team, including Kevin's newly adopted pet, Kyber's former pet, returns to Earth, ending a significant chapter in the Ben 10 Omniverse series. In the Frogs of War, Part 2, Earth is under Emperor Milius's control. Azmuth saves Ben and unlocks Bullfrag for him to infiltrate an incursion ship. Disguised as Bullfrag, Ben returns to Earth to join Gwen, Kevin, Rook, and others in resistance. They plan to stop Dr. Psychobos, who controls the Waybads, but are trapped by Atea. Ben reveals his identity and helps the team escape. They free Max and other plumbers from imprisonment. Ben, as Waybig, combats the Waybads while Rook and others use a Null Void projector to subdue them. Atea overthrows her father, Milius, and strikes a deal with Ben to retreat from Earth in exchange for her freedom. The episode concludes with Ben and his allies victorious, ready to resume their normal lives. Azmuth is featured at the end of A Fistful of Brains, where he is captured by Albedo and Kyber and confined inside a device. In For a Few Brains More, Albedo siphons off Azmuth's intellect, leading to the dominance of Azmuth's more primitive brain functions and turning him into a juvenile, foolish character. Once restored to his normal state, Azmuth modifies the Ultimatrix to transform Albedo into a young Ben, look-alike as a form of retribution. He also advises Ben to be gentler when activating the Omnitrix, noting that Ben's forceful hits are causing the transformation timer to become unpredictable. In Malgax Attacks, Ben approaches Azmuth to request the removal of Skurd from the Omnitrix. Intrigued by Skurd, a member of the supposedly extinct slime biot species, Azmuth initially tries to change Ben's mind, but eventually consents, employing ionic particle surgery to detach Skurd and placing him in a containment unit for study. During an assault on Galvin Prime by Vilgax and Albedo, Azmuth opts to confront Albedo. In his laboratory, Albedo, in his ultimate wrath form, appears to disintegrate Azmuth. However, Blukic and Dreba later find out that Azmuth had teleported away at the critical moment and they successfully restore him. 
Azimuth then deactivates Albedo's Ultimatrix using a special device, forcing Albedo back into the form of a young Ben. Azimuth reveals his foresight in designing safeguards against the Omnitrix's misuse, highlighting his reputation as a premier thinker. Following Vilgax's defeat, Azmuth praises Blukic and Driba for their intelligence in interpreting his left-behind clue, mentioning that the reformation process has also cured his sciatica, making him feel rejuvenated. And that brings us to the end of our journey through the incredible saga of Azmuth in the Ben 10 universe. From the creation of the Omnitrix to his pivotal role in the events of Omniverse, Azmuth has proven to be more than just a brilliant mind. He's a character with depth, facing challenges and moral dilemmas, showing growth and wisdom throughout the series. His journey reminds us of the complexities of science and responsibility, the consequences of one's creations, and the continuous pursuit of knowledge and understanding. Azmuth's story is a testament to the rich storytelling of the Ben 10 series, blending action, adventure, and profound themes that resonate with audiences of all ages. Thank you for joining me on this deep dive into the life and times of Azmuth. If you enjoyed this exploration and would like to see more content like this, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Keep the discussion going in the comments below. Who's your favorite character in the Ben 10 universe? And what other aspects of the series would you like us to explore next?